Fehler's origins trace back to Braunschweig, within the vast expanse of the German Empire. His early years were spent in Munich, where he attended a secondary modern school, immersing himself in the foundational aspects of education. Subsequently, he embarked on a journey of professional development by undertaking a merchant apprenticeship, a pivotal step towards his future endeavors. This pursuit led him to Schleswig-Holstein in 1914, where he continued to hone his skills and knowledge within the realm of commerce. The outbreak of World War I interrupted Fehler's burgeoning career as he answered the call of duty and enlisted in military service. His contributions on the battlefield were distinguished, earning him the esteemed Iron Cross, second class, a testament to his valor and commitment. Upon the war's conclusion in 1919, Fehler redirected his focus towards civic duty and governance. He seized the opportunity to serve his community by joining the local government of the city of Munich as an administration trainee. With diligence and determination, he navigated the complexities of public administration, steadily ascending the ranks. In 1922, Fehler achieved a significant milestone by successfully passing the examination for the administrative and clerical grade, marking a pivotal moment in his professional journey. This accomplishment not only underscored his aptitude and proficiency, but also positioned him as a capable steward of administrative affairs within the city. By the dawn of the 1920s, Karl Fieler had already cemented his allegiance to the burgeoning Nazi party, proudly bearing the membership number 37 as a testament to his early affiliation. The year 1923 marked a significant juncture in Fehler's involvement as he became a member of the Stoßtrupp Hitler, a specialized unit tasked with providing personal protection for Adolf Hitler himself. It was during this period that Fehler actively participated in the infamous Beer Hall Putsch on 8 and 9 November 1923, a coup attempt that ultimately met with failure. As a consequence of his role in the uprising, Fehler faced the harsh judgment of the judicial system and was sentenced to 15 months confinement within the confines of Landsberg Fortress. Undeterred by adversity, Fehler continued to dedicate himself fervently to the cause of National Socialism. From 1924 to 1933, he assumed the esteemed position of honorary alderman, leveraging his influence to propagate the principles of Nazi ideology at the local level. In a pivotal move in 1929, Fehler elucidated the fundamental tenets of Nazi municipal governance in his seminal work, National Socialist Municipal Policy. A comprehensive 80-page manifesto published by the prestigious Munich publishing house Franz Eyer Verlag, which served as the NSDAP's central publishing arm. Throughout the 1930s, Fehler remained a vocal proponent of national socialist doctrine, disseminating his insights on German local politics from a distinctly Nazi perspective through various publications. As an esteemed Alter Kempfer, old combatant, a designation reserved for early party members who joined before the Nazi ascension to power on 30 January 1933, Fehler enjoyed a privileged status within the party ranks. His membership number under 100,000 also granted him the esteemed title of Alte Garde, Old Guard, positioning him prominently within the party hierarchy. Fehler's ascent within the party echelon was rapid and remarkable. From 1927 to 1930, he held the influential position of Ortsgruppenleiter, local chapter leader, of the Nazi party in Munich further solidifying his stature as a stalwart figure in the National Socialist movement. Following the Machtergreifung, seizure of power, in January 1933, Karl Fehler's ascent within the Nazi party soared to new heights. From June 1933 until the demise of Nazi Germany in May 1945, he held the esteemed rank of Reichsleiter, standing as the second highest political figure within the NSDAP. Initially assuming the role of secretary, Feiler swiftly ascended to the position of head of the main office for municipal policy, wielding considerable influence over the party's governance strategies at the local level. Within the upper echelons of the Nazi party's leadership circle, 
Fehler emerged as one of the 20 most trusted confidants of Adolf Hitler, a testament to his unwavering dedication and strategic acumen. His stature within the party was further underscored by his appointment as a member of the prestigious Academy for German Law. On 31st of July, 1933, Fehler extended his sphere of influence by joining the ranks of the SS with the distinguished rank of Standartenführer. His rapid progression within the SS ranks was indicative of his prowess and commitment to the National Socialist cause. Culminating in promotions to Oberführer on 24th of December 1933 and to SS Gruppenführer on 27 January 1934. From November 1933 until the collapse of the regime in 1945, Fehler represented Electoral Constituency 24, Upper Bavaria Swabia, in the Nazi Reichstag, solidifying his role as a key figure in the legislative framework of the Nazi regime. This period coincided with the implementation of the Enabling Act of 1933 and the subsequent Gleichschaltung, synchronization, of political institutions under Nazi control. On 30 other January 1942, Fehler's stature within the SS reached its zenith as he was promoted to SS Obergruppenführer, further consolidating his influence within the paramilitary organization. He was subsequently assigned to the esteemed Stab Reichsführer SS, RFSS, under the command of Heinrich Himmler on 1 April 1936, where he remained until Negev November 1944 contributing significantly to the implementation of Himmler's directives within the SS apparatus. Karl Fehler's tenure as the mayor of Munich during the tumultuous years of Nazi rule left an indelible mark on the city's history. His appointment came amidst a backdrop of political upheaval and the swift imposition of Nazi authority following Hitler's rise to power. The storming of the Munich town hall by the Sturmabteilung, SA, on 9th of March, 1933, symbolized the abrupt shift in power, with the swastika flag unfurled as a stark emblem of Nazi dominance. Despite the defiance of then First Mayor Karl Scharnagel, who resisted Nazi control for 11 days atop the old city administration building, the tide turned on 20 March 1933, when Adolf Wagner, the Nazi Home Secretary of Bavaria and Gauleiter of Munich and Upper Bavaria, appointed Karl Fehler as the provisional first mayor. This appointment heralded a significant transformation in Munich's municipal leadership, culminating in Fehler receiving the title of Oberbürgermeister, Lord Mayor, on 20 May 1933, a title previously unrecognized in Munich's history. The consolidation of power under the Nazi regime resulted in the suppression of all opposition parties and organizations paving the way for the imposition of political Gleichschaltung, synchronization, both in Munich and across Germany. The notorious book burning on Königsplatz Square on 10 May 1933 and the subsequent persecution of non-folkish intellectuals led to an exodus of Munich's cultural elite, including notable figures like Thomas Mann. Under Fehler's leadership, Munich underwent a radical transformation characterized by the implementation of grandiose Nazi architectural projects spearheaded by Paul Ludwig Troost. Fehler, as editor of the pictorial book München baut auf, Munich Rebuilds, sought to showcase the city's evolution as the epicenter of the Nazi movement. Ambitious urban planning initiatives, such as the expansion of the Pazing district in the west, fueled a significant increase in Munich's population from $746,000 in 1936 to $889,000 in 1943. However, despite these grand ambitions, certain major projects, like the relocation of Munich Central Station to the Lame District, remained unrealized, existing only in the planning stages. Fehler's tenure as mayor of Munich was marked by the city's transformation into the capital of the movement, a title bestowed upon it by Hitler himself during a notable conversation with Fehler on the 2nd August 1935. Despite the grand aspirations and sweeping changes, Munich's urban landscape bore witness to both the ambition and the limitations of Nazi ideology during this tumultuous period. Under Fehler's leadership, 
Munich emerged as a fervent bastion of anti-Semitic persecution, with systematic discrimination and violence targeting the Jewish population becoming alarmingly prevalent. In the spring of 1933, Feeler zealously enforced the first systematic boycott against Jewish-owned businesses, decreeing the sanction on 30th of March, a day ahead of the official date of 1st April. The SA and SS, acting with impunity, terrorized Jewish businessmen and subjected them to arbitrary arrests under the guise of protective custody. Feeler further exacerbated the situation by unlawfully prohibiting municipal contracts with so-called non-German companies. The streets of Munich bore witness to horrifying scenes as SA sentries defaced Jewish shops with degrading symbols and slogans, while clients were harassed and intimidated. Jewish places of worship faced rapid demolition, reflecting the city's descent into a state of unchecked anti-Semitic fervor. The destruction of Munich's main synagogue in June 1938, orchestrated by Josef Goebbels, served as a chilling precursor to the escalating violence that would ensue. The night of 9th November 1938, infamously known as Reichskristallnacht, Night of Broken Glass, saw Munich's Nazi elite gather under Fehler's invitation, only for the event to devolve into a violent anti-Semitic rampage. Goebbels' incendiary rhetoric served as a catalyst for widespread attacks on Jews, resulting in numerous deaths, injuries, and the destruction of Jewish institutions. Feeler's administration extended its anti-Semitic policies even to the realm of death, with the Municipal Cemeteries Department adopting absurdly discriminatory practices. Deceased Christians of Jewish descent were denied cremation or burial rites, while Jewish Christians faced restrictions on burial practices and religious attire. Despite protests from religious authorities, Feeler's administration remained resolute in its persecution. As World War II unfolded, Munich became complicit in the horrors of the Holocaust, with the city serving as a hub for the deportation of Jews to extermination camps across Europe. The first transport departed in November 1941 under the guise of evacuation, ultimately leading to the mass murder of deportees in Lithuania. Over the course of the war, Munich facilitated the deportation of thousands of Jews to their deaths in camps like Auschwitz and Theresienstadt, cementing its role in the genocidal machinery of the Nazi regime. In the early afternoon of April 30, 1945, the first American soldiers, led by 27-year-old Lieutenant Wolfgang F. Robinow, made their way to Munich's central square, Marienplatz. With the surrender of the town hall, the grip of Nazi party rule over Munich came to an end. By this time, Karl Fehler had already vacated his position long before the American occupation of the city. On May 4, 1945, just four days prior to the official conclusion of World War II in Europe, the victorious American forces reinstated Karl Scharnagel as the Lord Mayor of the Bavarian capital. Following the war, in January 1949, Feiler, who was married and had three daughters, faced consequences for his involvement with the Nazi regime. He was sentenced to two years in a labor camp, subjected to the confiscation of one-fifth of his property, and handed a 12-year employment ban as a result of proceedings before denazification tribunals known as Spruchkammer Verfahren. However, he was spared from serving the sentence as the three and a half years of his pre-trial detention were credited towards the term of his imprisonment. Feeler died on December 8, 1969, in the village of Diesen on Lake Ammersee, nestled in the foothills of the Bavarian Alps. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.